Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator and welcome to New Zealand, the South Island and drumroll, the New Zealand Airline Academy in Omaru, Otago. Now this place is very special to me as this is the very airport I trained in, where it all began. And since I remember the area, I'm like, why not? Might as well. One to my fellow NZA crew, if any of you are watching this, welcome back. And to the ones who are in training at the moment, enjoy every moment of it because you will miss it when you're done and back home anyhow let's jump straight into today's topic which is learning about and identifying the parts of an aircraft i'll be using a general aviation trainer aircraft today we'll have a look at everyone's favorite the cessna c152 and before you guys ask me no there are no technam aircraft in microsoft flight simulator at the moment yeah i wish there was but i think one is in the makes so only time will tell and also I could not get one in the Tango X-ray Tango livery or even a plain white one at that. So here we have a Cessna 152 in the Tauranga Aero Club livery, Zulu Kilo, Tango Alpha Charlie or ZK TAC. I like to make my simulation videos as realistic as I can. If you are doing something, either go all the way through or don't do it at all. And if you are interested in either getting delivery or the airport for yourself, I've shared the link in the description box down below. They are from flightsim.to. And also please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, the bell notification as well for future content and please do share this video to someone you know who may find it useful. Enough chit chat, let's get straight to it. The Cessna C-152 is a high-wing two-seater light GA or general aviation aircraft with a fixed tricycle gear which is used primarily in flight schools around the world as a trainer and as a private aircraft. They were built between 1977 and 1985. Now I'm not rated on a Cessna although I have flown one in the past so please don't chew my head off in case I get something wrong. I apologize beforehand. We'll start with the walk around and then we'll dive straight into the cockpit. In the front, we have a dual blade fixed pitch propeller and the hub. Beside and in the rear, we can see the engine inlet for cooling as this is an air cooled engine. Behind the left opening is the cabin heat inlet, and behind the right opening is the carburetor heat inlet. Directly below the hub, we can see the landing taxi light assembly. And below that, we can see the filtered engine air intake and the exhaust right beside it. Moving a bit closer, we can see the, f the nose gear assembly and the oleo strut to provide dampening. Over here, we can see the steering linkage, which is directly connected to the rudder pedals. We also have a shimmy dampener to provide stability and to reduce lateral vibrations. Besides that, we have the fuel strainer discharge nozzle. We'll start from the left like how we usually walk around a light GA aircraft. Now bear in mind, for jetliners, it is usually performed the other way around. On the left, we have the engine cowling which houses the Lycoming O235L2C or N2C naturally aspirated flat 4-cylinder carbureted engine which churns out up to 110 horsepower and 108 horsepower for the N2C variant. The 235 in the name is indicative of the engine cubic capacity which is 235 cubic inches or around 3850 cc or 3.8 liters. We can see the Toranga Aero Club marking and below we can see the receptacle door for the external power. This inlet here is to cool the avionics which are aviation electronics. Below that we can see the static port which is used by the airspeed indicator altimeter and the vertical speed indicator. On top of the cowling we can see the grab handle which can be used to climb on the wing strut and check the fuel level and also inspect the wing from above. Complementing it are the two foot supports, one on the lower section of the cowling and one on the wing strut. Here we have the windscreen and the windows for the pilots. Say hi! Let's start from the wing route. On top we have the cabin air inlet. The one on the right side also provides the outside air temperature indication in the cockpit. Moving across the leading edge of the wing, here we have the pilot tube which is an instrument used to detect the airspeed. It can be heated when needed to prevent icing when flying in moist and cold conditions. 
Here we have the stall horn which detects and alerts the pilot of an impending stall. It works when there is negative pressure inside the inlet. A stall is a condition when the wing loses lift as a result of a high angle of attack or high or high G loading on the wings. Pilots are taught in their early days of training to identify and recover the aircraft from a stall. Here we have the wing strut which is usually present on high wing aircraft for structural integrity. Here we can see the loop for the tie down harness which is used to anchor the aircraft down during heavy winds. This is called mooring. Moving across the leading edge we come to the wingtips which are conical wingtips for better flight dynamics. If you have seen my how do aircraft fly video you might be able to recollect the shape. That's right that's an airfoil. We have the housing for the left red navigation light and the strobe light. Moving, be moving behind we can see the left aileron which is one of the primary controls and is used to bank or roll the airplane left or right. They are controlled by cables and are connected to the yoke or control column. The C-152 comes with differential ailerons. Now what that means is that both the left and the right ailerons are deflected at different angles with the upgoing aileron being deflected more than the downgoing one. So this is to contract adverse yaw. And here we have the static discharge wicks. They work by dissipating the static discharge of an aircraft from a lightning strike by safely discharging it back into the atmosphere. This prevents signal interference and uh, saves the onboard avionics from damage. Below we have inspection panels for the fuel tanks which are housed in the wings. Moving in, we can see the flaps which are currently in the retracted position and controlled electronically. I'll just turn the master on and extend them out for you. Here we can see them extended. The C-152 has three stages and up to 30 degree of deflection and are single slotted Fowler flaps. Here we can see a door guard to prevent the door or wing strut from being damaged by opening the door. Here we have the pilot side door and the window. The window can be opened in the flight up to a max speed of 143 knots. Moving down we can see the main undercarriage strut with a footstep for the pilot or passenger to enter or exit the aircraft. Here we have the tire and the brakes. The C-152 comes with hydraulic disc brakes mounted on the rear wheels which also serves as the parking brake. There are no brakes on the front wheel. Here we can see the brake disc, brake caliper and the brake line which channels the brake fluid. The brakes are manipulated by the pilot depressing the top portion of the rudder pedals. Some lighter aircraft do not come with a steerable nose gear. In that case, the pilot must independently apply the brakes on each wheel to steer the aircraft. This is called differential braking. The fuselage of the Cessna 152 is made mostly out of metal, being primarily of aluminium with a riveted skin. The wingtips and fairings are made out of glass reinforced plastic and follows a semi monocoque design. On the bottom we can see two antennas, the shark fin shaped one is the transponder which is a device that, pr that produces a response during radio frequency interrogation for identification on an ATC radar screen and the navigation display of other aircraft if equipped. The whip like antenna is an ADF or automatic direction finder receiver which is used in instrument flying to receive signals from a navigational ground aid called an NDB or non-directional beacon. On the rear we can see the empennage of the aircraft. Here we have the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator which controls the pitch of the aircraft. It is controlled by pulling back on the yoke or control column and is connected by cables running across the length of the fuselage. We also have static discharge wicks here as well. We have the vertical stabilizer and behind it the rudder. The rudder controls the yaw and is again manipulated by the pilot using cables and attached to the rudder pedals. On top of the vertical stabilizer we can see the red rotating beacon or anti-collision light. Just below it you can see the two V-shaped wires. They are the VOR or very high frequency omnidirectional range receivers and are used in 
instrument flying in navigation and to communicate with the VOR stations on the ground. Below the upper tip of the rudder we have the white navigation or position light and just below it we have another static discharge wick. Below the tail we have a rudder trim which is only trimmable on the ground. And here you can see the linkages which, which are used to manipulate the rudder. We also have another tie down point below the tail. On the trailing edge of the right elevator we have the trim tab which is controlled by a trim wheel on the lower portion of the dashboard in the cockpit. The trim tab moves in opposite sense to the elevator and helps in eliminating or reducing excessive stick force needed to maintain a particular pitch or airspeed thus reducing pilot fatigue. If you are wondering why it is present only on one side, well it is to save cost. We can also see the horn balance which is used to reduce the intensity of control inputs necessary for handling the aircraft. The aircraft, uh, sorry, the right is nearly as identical as on the left side with some minor changes. On the right wing tip we have a green navigation light and just below the right grab handle on the cowling we have the cabin air intake panel. On the right engine cowling we have an access panel to check the oil quantity via a dipstick and a fuel strainer discharge stick. On top we have the two VHF antennas for communication and the red caps what you see are the filler tank or the fuel tank filler caps. The C152 runs best on 100 LL or low lead fuel. The total capacity is 26 US gallons or close to 100 liters which with only 24.5 US gallons or approximately 94 liters as usable fuel. As a range of a little over 400 nautical miles or 470 miles or 750 kilometers. Longer range tanks can further increase the range. Max structural speed is 109 knots, 126 miles per hour or 200 kilometers per hour. And max achievable, achievable speed in calm conditions is 149 knots or 172 miles per hour or 275 kilometers per hour. Service ceiling is 14,700 feet or 4,500 meters and this is an unpressurized cabin. Now this being a default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we need to bear in mind that there are some parts which are missing. Some of them include but are not limited to the fuel tank pins and fuel strainer valves beneath the wings and ELT antenna on the fuselage etc. But it looks very close to the real one nonetheless. Alright, so that was the exterior and in the next video we are going to be diving into the interior of the aircraft.